Sometimes I think as a worshiper, I think sometimes with the things we're dealing with in our lives, probably my biggest breakthrough just comes when I just let go. <laughs> just let God. I don't know if you know what I mean by that. But just really just letting go of everything. Not worried about who's around me. Not worried about who's watching. Lord, I'm just going to let go. Lord, you've been so good. It's power. I think sometimes we need to understand and move. Let me say it this in manner. Sometimes we need to move from this religious facade of worship. If I can say it in that manner. And as they would say where I'm from, just let your hair down. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? Lord, I need to press in. Lord, I need you. Lord, I need you. I've tried everything else. I need you. Sometimes we're very hard-headed and stubborn people. I've tried everything else. I've tried other avenues. I've went to counselors. But I'm still dealing with my problems, Lord. I think he tells us to take his yoke upon us. And he will give us rest. Lord, I need you. Whether my house is gone or my car is, Lord, I need you. You are my hope. You are my salvation. You are my rock. Lord, I need you. The mountain's too big for me to move. The mountain's too large for modern equipment to be able to handle it. Lord, I need you. You declared in your word that you are a mountain mover. And I've got mountains in my way. Lord, I need you. See, when we begin to sing the song, I cry the name of Jesus. It's just identifying that the mountains are too big. They're too overwhelming. The giants have confronted me. And they have intimidated me. They have brought depression and anxiety into my life. The adversary's moved in. And he's trying to convince me that I'm not worthy. But I'm telling you, when you get, what do I do, preacher? You've got to understand there's power. In that name, power to address the mountains. Power to address the adversary. My, my, my. I don't know if you remember from last week, but sometimes if you don't have you won. You did, I, I almost left this morning, and I forgot. I said I didn't get my handkerchief. I said I got to go back. I got it laid out with the rest of my clothes. And sometimes you just need to declare and wave and say, devil, Get out of my space. Oh, my, my, I declare the mighty name of Jesus. It is power to deliver. This ain't some religious speech or some religious motions that we're going through. We're talking about the King of Kings, the Lord of Lords, who come to deliver you, who come to set you free, who come to give you joy, who come to bring peace in your life, who come to bring life into your life. We're talking about that man. My, my, my. Whoo! Lord, I just want to speak the name of Jesus. Glory to the Lamb of God. Hallelujah. I want, if you would, this morning, turn with me to the book of Joshua. Chapter 3 and verse 1. 
Hallelujah. I want to thank everyone for being here this morning. I want to thank everyone that's watching us by social media on whichever platform that you're listening to us this morning. May the power of God move into your house. Oh, the presence of God is not limited by doors or walls, neither by space or time. Amen. 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 That no matter where you may find yourself at, he is there. The book of Joshua in chapter 3, I want to speak to you this morning. The Lord, years ago, had given me a message. and I began to go back and revisit some of the things here. Joshua chapter 3 and verses 1 through 4. And Joshua rose up early in the morning, and they removed from Shittim and came to Jordan. He and all the children of Israel and lodged there before they passed over. And it came to pass after three days that the officers went through the host. And they commanded the people, saying, When you see the ark of the covenant of the Lord your God, and the priest, the Levites, bearing it, then ye shall remove from your place and go after it. Yet there shall be a space between you and it, about two thousand cubits by measure. Come not near unto it, that ye may know the way by which ye must go. And I like the last part of verse 4 here. For ye have not passed this way hitherto for. You have not been this way before. Lord, I ask you, Lord, to this morning, as a messenger, just a conduit, Lord, to, to bring forth your word today. Let the power of your anointing rest upon us, Lord. May the power of God move in this house this morning and deal with the issues and deal with the chains and the walls and the strongholds that have contained your people. Lord, move here in a mighty way. Lord, may light be brought unto the revelation of your word be brought to light. Use us today. May hearts be mended. May people be set free. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. Let me share this. I just want to lay something down before I get started. And there's a couple major things I do not want you to miss today. When I began to read just this morning, I was sitting in my office just a few minutes prior to coming in here. That I was thinking about this message and just reading over it. And I went back to the book of Joshua and began to read again. I want to speak to you this morning about breaking containment. Of the things that have contained you. Just like whether it may be walls or whether it may be chains. Or whether it may be events that have taken place in your life that you have just not got over or refused to get over. And somehow or another these things can have a dramatic impact upon our lives. They can have devastating impacts upon our life. Just the things that we begin to go through. And as I begin to read this this morning, because I was really thinking about the children of Israel, when the Lord had told them, I'm going to bring you out of Egypt. And before we even get there, the Lord had made a promise to a man by the name of Abraham that I'm going to bless your seed and I am going to give you this land. This land here that we're talking about. But he also said the people will be under the hand of a Pharaoh, the hand of the Egyptian. And they will be there, we find out, 400, a little bit over 400 years was they in bondage to Pharaoh and the Egyptians there. And we find here in Joshua chapter 3, please grab a hold to this. I just began to look at this because it was a little over 400 years that they had spent under the hand of Pharaoh. They had spent in Egypt. They were slaves to him. There were certain things that just had control over their life. And, and this is what Pharaoh was. He was a taskmaster. Ma taskmaster. These are the very events that take place in mine and your life that control us. We become a slave 
to them. Whether it be events, and I want to tell you this morning, just some events that had taken place in our life that had hit us in a negative way control us a lot of times the majority of our life. We cannot move forward. We cannot advance. God cannot even use us because we will not allow him to use us because of the things that we have come through in our past. And they just hold us into a place of bondage. We are afraid to step out because of what may happen. We scared to step into a new realm because of what could happen. You talk to people very long and you will ask them. You can see the people that's been affected by these things. When it comes to ministry, I want to tell you this morning, there's probably a vast amount. I would say a majority of church people are hurt by some things that have taken place in their past and them things are still holding you bondage. You can't break containment from it. You know how I know? Because I have been there. You can hear it in people's speech. You can hear it from the way that they talk. Every time that you begin to deal, God's got a purpose in your life. God is wanting to do something great in your life. The first thing we revert back to, Pastor, you don't know what all I've been through. You don't know who done what to me. You don't know how that them people affected me. You are letting them things that happened to you in your past contain you from stepping in to your future. A lot of times the church can't even move forward because we're grabbing, all, dragging all of this luggage behind us like a ball and chain. And like we're tied to it and we refuse to let go of it. Oh, you're with me this morning. And I get over here and I start seeing this. The children of Israel had been in the, under the hand of Pharaoh and the Egyptians here now for 400, and we say 420 years, we just use it as a round number, it's going to be close. But they get it here to the book of Joshua, and Joshua is telling them, prepare yourself, get ready, something is about to happen. Not only 420 years in Egypt, but they had spent 40 years in a wilderness. I said they would not completely came out of Egypt until they crossed the Jordan River. Oh, I, I'm just staying with me right here. I said they was not completely out of Egypt until they crossed the Jordan River, not the Red Sea, because we find out that when they came out of Egypt and crossed the Red Sea, even though they was physically removed from Egypt, oh my, they were still mentally and emotionally connected to there. And I like it right here because there is something that's said here. This is a major moment for the children of Israel. Can you tell me, there's a major moment that is taking place here in verse 4. And when Joshua tells them, says, we have not been this way before. In other words, Joshua is saying, we are about to break loose from the stronghold that Egypt and Pharaoh has had on us for over 460 years, we are about to break loose from this thing. My, my, my. Whew. I, I thought to myself, oh, it had to be a moment of anticipation, a moment of excitement for a generation now, this is generation two, can we call it that? Uh, generation one never could get Egypt out of them. Even though they had left Egypt physically, their biggest problem was not being removed physically from Egypt. The thing that they were struggling with was trying to get Egypt out of them. They really dealt with this. They died. Not being able to move from the, from the trauma, from the things that Pharaoh had indoctrinated them into. They just could not move beyond it and it controlled them. You see this as they move out of Egypt, cross the Red Sea. Stay with me here just a minute. Let me back up one second because you would have thought this would have been a game changer. When they came out of Egypt and they went down by the Red Sea, we find out that the Lord said, I'm going to deliver y'all in this direction. 
Because if we go another direction, you're going to see that there's wars that's going on and you're going to want to turn and go back to where you came from. And I thought about this. There was physical wars going on, but there was mental things taking place in their head that just could not get past. But you would have thought when they got down to the Red Sea, you probably heard this story when you was in Sunday school. And you probably wanted to shout a little bit even as a little old kid thinking about the very power of God and what he was able to do. Because they was down there. They was not completely out. They had just left Egypt. Is anybody with me? I said they had just left Egypt. They had not yet crossed out of Egypt into the wilderness. They just left Egypt. They had been delivered by the blood of the Lamb. They get down to the Red Sea. And at the point that they was in, they were surrounded. Had found themselves in a trap. Anybody with me? They had found themselves surrounded by the Egyptians. Pharaoh and his chariots. The only thing that was there was the Red Sea in front of them. And Pharaoh and his army behind them. Absolutely nowhere to go. You can probably imagine, man, a taskmaster that's had control over your life for 420 years. And now you've been delivered by the blood and you're headed out. He's not one to, wanting to let you go. He's probably threatening you with everything else. If I get my hands on you. You're going to regret that you ever left. When they get down right here, what are we going to do? Where are we going to go? I can feel the pressure of Pharaoh and his army pressing in. It was there that God began to display himself that I am a deliverer. I was the one who brought you out by the blood of the Lamb. Don't you let this Red Sea be a deterrent to you. Neither let it let you be discouraged by Pharaoh and his army behind you. If I brought you out, I'm going to carry you in. And the Lord spoke unto Moses here that day and he stretched his rod out. Oh, can you imagine being there? Anybody with me? He stretched his rod out. The Red Sea parted on both sides and they began to walk across on dry. I don't know about walk. I might have wanted to dance across just a little bit. Lord, I wanted to sing the song. Look what the Lord has done. I, Pharaoh, I know you tried to get me, but you should have got me when you had a chance. I'm coming out of Egypt. Oh, they, they wish I could see it right now. We're coming out. God has brought us out. We've seen the bloodshed. And now we have seen the water part. My, my, my. Got a good congregation going on. People shouting. I'm talking about the Israelites. They shouting, boy. Woo, man. Man, they, they had a praise and worship like we got. Their drums done hit up. What I'm saying, look what the Lord has done. Oh, they were shouting and singing and dancing and going across the Red Sea. We're coming out of Egypt. And the Lord brought them out. But that wasn't the biggest task. The, the most complicated thing was trying to get Egypt out of them. Egypt had created a system. They had major issues here. And I believe today one of our major problems that our lives are no further advanced spiritually than they are is because of the lack of spiritual influence to be able to overcome the carnal desires to go back to where we came out of or to overcome a system in which we have become, have we have become accommodated to. And this was the thing that Pharaoh had. He had brought him to a place that I am your provider. Oh my. You're not with me this morning. I said Pharaoh had learned if you will provide certain needs for people, they become dependent upon that. Pharaoh had learned this and he had them in a place that I'm going to give you some water. I'm going to give you a little, bread, a little bit of bread. You may not like it where you're at, but you do have something to eat and you have something to drink. And you will be amazed what people will give up for something to eat and something to drink. 
I tell you how deep it is. You will give up the very promises of God for a place that you can find yourself comfortable with the necessities of life. Mm. I wish it were, anybody with me. This is a system that it was created by the Egyptians, a system to sustain them, a system to contain them. And it's time to break loose. It's time to break loose from this spirit of containment and step into that which God has called you to. We will make mention when you talk to people about purpose and callings, and the things that God's calling you to do, the first thing that we come up with, we let the world system influence our decisions. Now, this ain't for everybody. Just hang on. Just, we're going to just step a little bit deeper. For the ones that we've been so contained by the world system that now we're trying to figure out how am I going to be able to do that which God has promised for me and yet someone sustained me. Can I tell you this this morning? The God that has called you is the God that's also able to sustain you. My, my, my. We find them over there in the, the wilderness. They crossed the Jordan, they crossed the Red Sea. Made, made it to the Jordan River yet. There's 40 years to go. But I do want to say something here. And I want to say something about your purpose and the promise. Because what the Israelites were dealing with was a promise that had been spoken some 400 years ago to a man by the name of Abraham that this is, will be the land that I should give you. And it was here that they was called out. And let me say this very clear this morning. Your purpose will always be challenged. I hope you didn't think it was going to be a bed of roses. You will always find resistance or testing on your way to your purpose or your calling. Let me say it one more time. You will always find resistance or testings. And I use these two things. On your way to your purpose and your calling. This is the, the reason why most people never really ever step in to the thing that God has called them to do or never fulfill that which God has called them to do. Because as soon as you make an attempt to cross the Red Sea, you're going to find out that there's going to be some restrictions that the devil's going to put in place. The last thing he's wanting is for you to fulfill the promise which God has placed on the inside of you. I wish somebody would help me out this morning. This is, he's going to throw up obstacles and barricades in your way trying to... To resist you, trying to discourage you, trying to irritate you. You've been in church before. Some of you here this morning, God's got a mighty calling upon your life. You've been in church for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years. God has done mighty things. He's spoken to your life. But as you look around, you're still 20 years back, still wandering around in the same place, aggravated, frustrated, irritated. Lord, I don't know what to blame in everybody else for your problem when your problem is with inside of you. Man, you get here. The wilderness is a testing ground. The wilderness will, your focus will be challenged in the wilderness. Hello, somebody. Stay with me here. Your focus will be challenged in the wilderness. It was here that the Israelites' focus was moved from the promise of what God had for them back to a system that held them captive of their potential and their freedom. Oh my. Can I say this this morning? Whom the sun sets free is free indeed. God wants you to place your trust in Him Oh, not in a system that the world has created. I want to tell you, I don't know how he's going to provide. It is not my job to try to figure out that. He's the Jehovah Jireh, not me. Yeah. 
My, he's called you to something. He's just wanting you to step into it. And I want to tell you here this morning, I can't defeat a giant. I can't bring a giant down. I, I, can't, I can't do none of this. I can't bring the walls of Jericho down. But I know a God who can. My, my, my confidence is not in myself. It's not in finances. It's not in a world system. My confidence is in Jehovah Jireh. He is my provider. In El Shaddai, the almighty God. I want to say this this morning. At this time and this hour in which we're living in. We're living in a midst of chaos. It's time for the church to rise up and step in to that which God has called us to and stop looking at all the storms and chaos that are spiritually taking place. I want to tell you, it may be happening all around you, but I want to tell you this morning, I know the man who still sits on the throne, he can't be dethroned and he cannot be replaced. He's the King of kings and the Lord of lords. My, my, my. This is the one who's called you. Listen to me just one more minute here. We get all excited when you start to talk about the characteristics of who he is. Oh, I stirred up a little emotion here just this moment. We got to talking about him being Jehovah Jireh, being a provider, being a way maker. Oh, he's the one who has called me. He's the one who's redeemed me. Oh, he's the one who spoke promises into my life. We all excited about who he is. And then the question is prompt to us. What are you going to do with your calling? Hold. I can't do this. All of a sudden our mind goes back to Egypt. To a world system, if I can say in this manner. How am I going to make it? <laughs> Whew, it got quiet in here. What's going on in the wilderness would always challenge your focus. It's easier to trust in a system that sustains you than to trust God for the promises you have not seen. This is why he calls it walking by faith. Whew, man. My, my, he's called us to walk by faith. The wilderness can be a place of two things. A place of discouragement or a place that propels you into the awesome promises of God. It's just according to how you look at it. Mm. Let me just say this just one second. And if you don't do it, but say it to yourself. You're not here by accident. The wilderness experience is to catapult you into the next dimension of the promises of God. You can't get to the promises until I get through the wilderness. Oh, my, my, my. I know we're trying to put the, the cart ahead of the horse. But I cannot reach the promises of God until I go through the wilderness to get there. Some of us right now are grumbling and complaining about the wilderness. Because mm. things happen in the wilderness that are very, not very comfortable. You ought to touch your neighbor and say, he's right about that one. It's not very comfortable here. It's not, it's not a very easy place here. And I want to say this this morning. You thought the wilderness was to destroy you. But it, the wilderness was never intended to destroy you. Mm. It's you that has said that. God didn't say that. God told the children of Israel, we're coming out of Egypt, we're going through the wilderness, and we're stepping into the promised land. It was when the children of Israel got in the wilderness that they looked back and said, God's trying to destroy us. That same tactic still working today because just talk to people. God's brought me out here. He's trying to destroy me. He's trying to do it. Yes, He is. Because you've got to be crucified with everything that God does not want going into the promised land has got to stay back in Egypt or leave it in the wilderness. 
This is what God's trying to work out of you. He said, before I can use you, before you're going to be able to face a giant and face the Jericho walls, you're going to have to have enough faith just to walk through the wilderness. Oh, my, my, my. Anybody with me? God reminds me of this all the time. God, I said, he reminds me of this all the time. Let me get you down. I said, he reminds me of this all the time. I catch myself sometime with the mully grubs. Oh, you, you don't know what I'm talking about. Anybody over here on this side? I, I'm talking about the same thing that the children of Israel had, just complaining and murmuring. Uh, God, why you bring me out here? Why am I going through this? I, I don't want to be here. I, I want to be over there. I want to get from here to there. God, you promised me that land over there. Why am I walking in the wilderness? Why don't, why don't, why ain't I got water out here? Where am I, how am I going to make it? We got all these complaints. Uh, and we're, all we can think about, God, you promised me that. I didn't want to go through the wilderness. I wanted to leave Egypt and go straight to the promise. Am I making any sense? And the church is being contained. You know what we're doing? Walking around the same old mountain day after day. Same old place. Lord help me here. God's looking for people that will say I'll trust you Lord. My, my, my. I, I said this before. I'm looking, God looking for some people who've been through some stuff. Any, anybody know what I'm talking about? Just bear with me right here just one minute. Y'all remember old Jacob? Anybody remember him? Oh, you don't know who I'm talking about, do you? He walked with a limp. He had a dream. Anybody know what I'm talking about? He had a dream, and when he had a dream, the, oh, the angel of the Lord had a hold to him, and the day was breaking. And old Jacob was saying, let me go, let me go. He said, I'm, the angel was saying, let me go, let me go. And Jacob said, I ain't going to let you go until you bless me. I need you to do something in my life. I'm going to hang on. I can't let go now. I thought about this. Jacob was saying in his mind, I've come too far to turn back now. I've come too far to let go now. My, my, my. I thought about old Jacob because I thought to myself, I want to surround myself with men like old Jacob. I, I said, if you ain't got scars in your life, don't come in my circle. If you don't walk with a limb, don't come in my circle. I want to be connected with some people who've been through some stuff. Oh, you not, you don't know what I'm talking about. I'm talking about people that have seen the walls of Jericho come down. They walk in with a limp and they hobble a little bit. They got some scars that the wilderness left with them. But they begin to tell you, let me tell you about what I've seen God do. There's a reason I'm walking with this limp. It's a reminder of where God brought me from. My, 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 is anybody with me? Your scars and them limps that you got, it was not for despair. It was to bring glory to the name of the Lord. Oh my, of the things that he has brought me from. I will testify this morning, the worst time in my life. I walked around for two years, God blaming God for where I was at and the things that I had been through. What I didn't understand was when I come to the place I waved my little white hanky and said, Lord, I surrender to your will. I don't know why I'm here, but I do know if I'm going to move out of the wilderness I'm going to have to submit to your will. And what I thought was meant to destroy me, oh my my Lord, God was working something on the inside of me. Woo! Man. Y'all better. Man. Got to the wilderness and we're stuck there. We're just stuck here. Let me see. I'm going to have to close. I'm not going to get through with everything. There's two things that take place in the wilderness. Are you with me? Just let me know. Are you in the wilderness or have been there? Two things take place there. And one of them is about you. And the other one's about God. Oh my. Now I don't know who else has been involved in your life in the wilderness. But the wilderness experience is not but about two people. 
It ain't about these other parties that have been involved in your life. It's about you and about God. And the reason I bring this up, because we continue to ride the crutch and excuses that we're no further along because of somebody else. I was in the car some time ago. I would like to tell you it was last week, but I tell you it was some two or three years ago because I would be embarrassed to tell you it was last week or no longer than two weeks ago that I thought some things that I was over with and all of a sudden things get begin to come up and they begin to ask me, says, Stacy, how, what's going on in your life? And my wife was standing there when I was on the phone talking to them. And when I hung the phone up, my wife says, you don't never need to go back there again. Because this ain't about nobody but you and God. Let me tell you what the wilderness does. First of all, we deal with the God part. It reveals who he is. In the wilderness, when I didn't have water, it came out of a rock. Hmm. He's just preparing them. See, before I can expect Jericho walls to come down, I need to have enough faith that at least I can believe water to come out of a rock. For God to provide my necessities. Is anybody with me? How am I going to be able... How, what would I, I can't expect... To go face any giants. I can't expect to go face the Amalekites and the Amorites. I can't even believe God that he's going to water me today. Oh, you're not with me. It's in the wilderness that God just reveals who he is. When he brings water out of the rock, he says, I'm taking care of you. Oh, you're with me. And when they didn't have any, nothing to eat, the Lord just brought some manna down out of heaven. Oh, is anybody with me? You know what he said? He said, listen, I got you. I got you. I know it ain't comfortable in here. But there's some lessons being taught, and I'm just trying to prove to you, I got you. Oh, when you can't find the way, just look for the fire. Woo! He said, because I'm going to lead you in the middle of the night. mm mm mm, -mm. And when the hot of the sun begins to come upon you in the desert, he said, I'm going to be the cloud that overshadows you in the daytime. Is anybody with me? Are you with me here? God just said, I got you. He just said, I am that I am. If you needed water, I provided it. If you needed manna, I provided it. When you needed something to lead you at night, I was the light. When you needed something to cover you in the daytime, I was the cloud. My, 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 is anybody with me? And I want to tell you what else the wilderness does. The wilderness not only reveals who God is, it reveals what's in you. Whew. Reveals what's inside of me. And I would be convinced that we're no further along than we are. I'm 100% convinced that it's not because of who he is. Because it's because of what's in me. Still walking around. It's time to break containment. It's time to step in to that which God has called you to. Your calling, your purpose, your promise. I'm not saying it's been easy. You know it hasn't. But what God's been doing in the wilderness is preparing you to catapult into Canaan. Yeah. <laughs> Woo, my, my, my. You ain't with me. <laughs> you may not know what I'm talking about. 
But just not too long ago, they had some Olympic Games. And they had them people that pole vault. Ain't that what it's called? They got this long pole and they begin to run. And when they run in, they, they stick that pole in the ground and their weight and their speed catapults them 14 or 15 up, feet up in the air. You, you're not with me. Is anybody with me? And I'm telling you what the wilderness was doing. Just preparing you to catapult over the Jordan River into the promised land. Uh, you can't catapult over and you until you get through the wind. I have prepared you for such a time as this. Uh, oh my, I like what he told them. He said in the book of Joshua, get ready, get ready, get ready. We're about to go away that we haven't been before. A generation has died out and generation number two is here. Woo, my, my, my. Lord, stand on your feet. I'll preach forever. <laughs> my, my, my. They, they, they got, you, you know, I, I'm, I'm telling you, this burns in me. This burns in me. This burns in me. Knowing that I, I've been in the wilderness. Preacher, you don't know what I'm, I guess I do. You just don't know. You just don't know. And I thought to myself as he told him this. My, my. I'm just going to have to do this today. I just can't help myself. They got to the Jordan River. And he told them. Says, get the ark ready. We're about to go away that we hadn't been before. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Help me out here. And I said, they're about to go away that they hadn't been before. This is what Joshua was telling them. We walked past this way. We walked around this way. We've come past this crossing before. We've looked over into the Jordan River and we sung the songs about it. And we've done the dances about it. But today, we ain't walking past this place no more. We're about to catapult ourselves over into that which God has called us. I can see them now. They begin to take their shoes off. Taking the shoes. What are you doing? What are you doing? I'm leaving the wilderness. It's contained me for too long. The wilderness has contained you long enough. I want the praise and worship group to come.